Hey guys, welcome back to the next lecture. This is part two of benign and malignant breast lesions. In this one, we're simply going to focus on breast cancer itself. So let's dive in. Now, in part one of this lecture, we went over screening for breast cancer. This is how the majority of breast cancer cases are going to be detected. However, a little less than half of all patients will present with a breast mass with, that was either not visible with screening mammography or that developed in the time between screening mammographies. Now, some signs of breast malignancy include a breast mass that's not mobile, that's hard, and that has irregular borders. And you may also want to be on the lookout for skin findings, including things like dimpling, thickening, or erythema. And depending on whether the cancer has advanced, local axillary adenopathy might also be present. Now, the most common sites for uh, metastatic diseases of the breast include the bone, liver, brain, and lungs. And symptoms may manifest as back pain or leg pain with bony metastasis, jaundice or abdominal pain with liver metastasis, and cough or dyspnea with metastasis to the lungs. Now, depending on the size and location of the brain metastasis, patients can present with headache, nausea, weakness, seizures, or even mental status changes. Now, the imaging that's used to identify possible breast cancer will include diagnostic mammography, and that's something we discussed in the last lecture. Now, on diagnostic mammography, Signs that are consistent with breast cancer include the presence of a soft tissue density or mass with grouped microcalcifications and an advanced or invasive disease, a high density mask with speculations. On breast ultrasound, findings consistent with breast cancer include angular and indistinct margins, speculations, calcifications, hypoechoic characteristics, and a lesion that is taller than it is wide. Now, MRI is used for screening in patients with an elevated risk of breast cancer instead of screening mammography, and findings consistent with breast cancer include a spiculated mass with irregular margins, internal septa with enhancement, and a regular enhancement of the breast mass. Now, when it comes to deciding the next best step on the exam when you're working with a palpable breast mass, remember that imaging is always going to come before any of the biopsies or aspirations. So, if imaging has not yet been performed, but excisional biopsy or corneal biopsy or fineal aspiration are options in your vignette, the imaging modality is going to be performed before any of these interventions. Now, to add some further clarification on which imaging modality is selected when a palpable breast mass is detected, age of the patient plays a big role. Patients who are under 30 should have a breast ultrasound performed if a palpable mass is detected because the breast tissue is often too dense to identify lesions on diagnostic mammography in this age group. Then, for those who fall between the ages of 30 and 39, doing either an ultrasound or a diagnostic mammography is appropriate, and often both will be. And after the age of 40, diagnostic mammography will be the preferred imaging modality uh, for a workup when a palpable breast mass has been identified. All right, now, as for the different histological types of breast cancer, the most common is the infiltrating ductal carcinoma. This appears as cords and nests of cells. The next most common is the infiltrating lobular carcinoma, which appear as small cells infiltrating the, mam the mammary stroma and adipose tissue in a single file pattern of cells. Finally, the next most common is the mixed ductal slash lobular carcinoma, which has features of both histologic types. And together, these three histologies make up around 85 to 95% of all breast cancers. Now, in terms of breast cancer gene expression, you need to be aware of three different gene expressions because they have a huge impact on prognosis and they can guide adjunct therapy. So, first, we have human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, known as HER2 for short. Now, HER2 positive breast cancers usually have a worse prognosis because they grow faster. That results in a cancer that is often metastasized by the time it is detected. Estrogen receptor, known as ER, and progesterone receptor, known as PR, both of these positive types of breast cancers have a better prognosis because hormone therapy targeting these receptors is likely to be more effective. Now, immunohistochemistry is typically used to identify if ER or PR are positive in the breast cancer, and is sometimes used in identifying HER2 as well, though many methods, including the Western blot and ELISA, are also used to identify if the cancer is HER2 positive or negative. So the presence or absence of these genes plays a huge role in prognosis, but the most important indicator for breast cancer is still going to be tumor stage. So let's talk about staging now. So if there is a tumor present, the tumor stage is going to depend on both the tumor size and whether there is direct extension to the chest wall and or skin. If there's no primary tumor, 
then T0 would be used, which is really only important if there's evidence of nodal involvement or metastasis. If you see the term TIS, this refers to cancer that is in situ. Otherwise, we have this system that goes from T1 to T4, with T1 representing a primary tumor that is 20 millimeters or less when measured from edge to edge of the longest component of the tumor. T2 is used when the primary tumor is above 20 millimeters, but less than 50, when we measure that from edge to edge of the longest component of the tumor. T3 is a primary tumor that is bigger than 50 millimeters measured, measured from ed to edge to edge um, of the longest component, but is without direct extension to the chest wall or skin. But if there's any direct extension to the chest wall and or skin, then we call it T4. So T3 and T4 are essentially the same size. It just depends on whether there's extension into the chest wall or skin. All right, now moving on to the regional lymph nodes and the distant metastasis staging systems. If there are no lymph node metastases found, this is known as N0. If there are movable mets to the ipsilateral axillary lymph node or lymph nodes, this is N1. And if there are fixed metastases to the ipsilateral axillary nodes, this is N2. Mets to the ipsilateral infraclavicular, internal mammary, or supraclavicular lymph node or nodes would constitute N3. Now, metastasis to different sites is referred to as M. And if there are no distant uh, metastasis found, we call it M0. If there are distant mets found, we call this M1. Now, treatment of non-metastatic breast cancer will depend on staging and breast cancer gene expression of ER, PR, and or HER2, HER2. So early stage breast cancer is defined as T1N0 to T2N1. So anything less than these, these types uh, constitutes early stage breast cancer. So this would include T1N0, T0N1, T1N1, T2N0, and T2N1. Any breast cancer at these stages is considered early stage. Now the first step in early stage breast cancer is going to be breast surgery. And this can be, be breast conservation or mastectomy, depending on patient-specific factors, as well as patient preference. So during this surgery, axillary lymph nodes will also be assessed, and they'll be dissected uh, if needed. And following surgery, radiation therapy may or may not be used. Depends. Postmenopausal women with hormone receptor-positive breast cancer should be treated with an aromatase inhibitor. Premenopausal patients under 35 years of age with hormone receptor positive breast cancer or who are over 35 with high risk features should be treated with ovarian suppression and an aromatase inhibitor. Premenopausal patients who are over 35 years of age without high risk features with hormone receptor positive breast cancer should be treated with tamoxifen. If triple negative breast cancer is present, meaning ER, PR, and HER2 receptors are not positive, then the patient should be treated with chemotherapy. And the, reg the regimen we're typically going to rely on is doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, and paclitaxel. Okay. Now, locally advanced breast cancer is from T3N0 to T4N3, basically everything that is not considered early stage. For these patients, the first step is typically chemotherapy rather than breast surgery. So the patients will undergo various differing chemo treatment regimens plus trisuzumab for HER2-positive breast cancer, and then following chemo, the patients will have breast surgery and surgical evaluation of the lymph nodes. Following surgery, postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancers are treated with an aromatase inhibitor. Pre premenopausal patients under 35 years of age who are found to have hormone receptor positive breast cancers or over 35 years of age with high risk features should be treated with ovarian suppression as well as an aromatase inhibitor. Premenopausal patients over 35 without high-risk features of hormone receptor-positive breast cancer can be treated with tamoxifen. If triple negative breast cancer is found, there's no need to treat again with chemo, but if HER2-positive is found with a pathologic complete response of the tumor by the time of surgical uh, resection, then the recommendation is to continue treating with trituzumab for one more year. All right, now, when it comes to managing metastatic breast cancer, the goal here is to improve the quality and length of life and relieve symptoms. So for hormone-positive uh, metastatic breast cancer, the first-line treatment is endocrine therapy with an aromatase inhibitor, unless symptoms are already very severe or rapidly progressing, or if there's end-organ damage occurring as a result of the metastasis, in which case we'd start chemotherapy. Now, chemotherapy is given as one single agent at a time with the goal of limiting the side effects as well because combination therapy does not have an improved outcome compared to a single agent alone. 
for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, your first line treatment will be trezuzumab, pertuzumab, and paclitaxel. All right, let's do some content review questions. Here's your first one. I'll put 20 seconds on the clock, but if you need more time, hit that pause button. Correct answer here is B. Next question, 20 seconds on the clock. If you need more time, hit that pause button. The correct answer here is A. And your final question, 20 seconds on the clock. If you need more time, you guys know what to do. The correct answer here is D. All right, guys, that is the end of this lecture. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.